All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin, and we're gonna check on a few things. One is that red hydrangea flower that we put in here. It had lots of petals, and we'll see how they've done on the petals versus the stem. We also put a carrot with a little bit of the orange end on it and the leaves, and I wanted to see which they go for first, the orange end or the leaves. So let's get into it. Now, as I was preparing for this video, I thought maybe doing a year in review for this bin or something, but then as I took some castings out, I found a bunch of the stuff, which is essentially a year in review. So this right here is probably the oldest thing that's been in here. And I think it was April 9th that we found this or put this in here. And that was a pine cone. So you can see they've kind of gotten into it and it's super delicate and they have gone in and out of it. And there's all kinds of castings within it and it just comes right apart. The other thing is this mango seed. This mango seed has been in here forever. <laughs> And I just wanted to test how long they take, and it is also pretty delicate, although you could hear some crunching, so more moisture will help this go. And then right here, we put some peaches in here. These are some cherry seeds, and then a plum, and those were all put in a long time ago. These are going to take absolutely forever to break down. In fact, I might come in here one time with some pliers and get rid of them. And these are loofah. Let me show you what they start out as. So this is a loofah that is fully grown and it's starting to yellow. It's about the time that you would possibly pick it to get a sponge. And when you take the skin off, it looks something like this. And these things are great sponges for the bath or for the kitchen, that kind of thing. And actually this one, we just took the skin off and it still has some seeds within it. I don't know if you can see that right there but there are seeds in here. So we let this dry out and then you shake the seeds out. But yeah, so I love to grow loofah and we put the ends in and here they are. Just wanted to see if the worms were able to break down the different fibers. And it looks like they have gone all throughout and added castings throughout this. So I imagine there's some maybe baby worms inside here. And then finally we have some various sticks, but this right here is different banana stems. And here you can really see how long it takes for them to get broken down. Here are fibers. This one is the oldest and they absolutely eat everything in between it and then just leave kind of the fibers and eventually those get broke down. This looks hard, but it's not. It is super mushy, super soft in there. And then this one is even further along than that. And it also super mushy inside. And you can just see the fibers. Who knew that that banana stems had all these fibers in it? So let's go ahead and kind of move this stuff to the side and let's get into our previous feeding. Now I kind of have to go slow here because that carrot is probably delicate. And like I said, I took some castings out around the edge. That's why you saw this piled up high and around the edges is where I pulled some material from here and then sorted it out for my harvest. And as I pull through here, you can just see tons of worms. They are all over this. And this right here may be some of the holiday cheer bedding. So let's keep digging. This is tomato stems, some onion skin. All right, as I go through here, I can start to see some of the flower. And what I'm seeing right here doesn't look very broken down, but it definitely looks like there's worms throughout it. And right on this side, I believe, was where we had put the carrot. So let me get a little bit more vigorous here. And wow, there is the flower. It does not look like the hay really got to it that much. And it has been seven days. Now, like I said, when we started this last week, I didn't freeze them. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And there are worms all throughout. You can see they're trying to get into the spaces and maybe find what is already starting to decompose. But it also feels dry inside here. So I'm going to have to wet this down, I think, next time. Seven days later and there's still a lot of petals. Here you can see some of the petals came off and you see just kind of the red branches. But let's put that to the side and keep digging. Okay, here's the other flower. Maybe, maybe they got to this one a little bit better. Nope, about the same. And the thing that I'm noticing is that it feels real dry. So I think that may have been what I needed to do last time was add some water. So we're gonna do that this time. I'm going to reset these into a feeding zone and then I'll add water. But let's look for that carrot top. 
The carrot top is the one thing that I think may not end up being in here. They may have gotten the carrot and the stem, but you can just see tons of worms throughout. They really are all throughout this bin. I think I have maybe four to 5,000, maybe three to 5,000, somewhere in there. That's a pretty big range, but it's a 10 gallon fabric pot, so it can take a lot of food and have a lot of castings in it. Let me just kind of dig around. I, man, yeah, well, here we go. I think this is the carrot stem. There's the stem and no sign of the carrot. To me, that makes sense. The carrot has a lot of sugar content to it, and the stem is very fibrous. So that would make sense to me that they got to it first. There's also a chance that it's lost somewhere in here in this mess of a feeding zone. Let me kind of mix things around and get from the outside in. That helps things from going anaerobic and helps me figure out if there's something that the worms are not eating or getting to. Like here, you can kind of see the pits right here. This is something that's been down there for quite a bit, for quite a long time, and there's worms all throughout it. So I probably disturb them. And you don't have to aerate. There's plenty of people that just add food to their worm bin, take the castings out when they need them, and never dig around in them. I just love coming through here and just seeing these great castings and then seeing the worms all throughout them. Just really good showing. When I took out the castings, we collected the worms that got sorted out, and we're going to do a time lapse at the end of this video. Yeah, look at that. Look at all those worms right there. Just just a great amount of worms. And this is a lot of castings. I'm going to need some more bedding. In fact, when we sifted, we captured a lot of the bedding. And we'll, we'll be adding that back in. Again, a mango seed. And they are all on the outside here. I don't think they've made it inside. But they're taking care of all of the fibers. If you've ever bought a whole mango and tried to cut it up, you'll know that there's tons of fibers on the seed. In fact, I'm not really good at cutting up a mango. I always seem to have so much of the flesh left on it. One more section over here, and I think this is the two parts of the same seed. That is still trying to find its way into compost material. All right, let me put these flowers to the side and then dig through this last section right here. Whoa, look at that. Look at all those worms. Just great showing within here. Looking good. And here's the leaf of a hydrangea right there. All right, so let's set up that feeding zone. Put the flower back in there. I'm going to put those mango seeds in the center of it. And as I'm setting up this feeding zone, I'm barely finding any of that compostable stuff that we had put in here. We had a compostable tray, and it is nearly gone. I think this right here is basically all that's left. So we'll keep that right here in the middle. And then let's bring in the hydrangea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this thing. After I'm done, I will put water in it. So let's add my freezer full of goodies that have just been piling up. And I'll have to get that banana later, that sticker. Oh, actually, I think we can just take it off now. Usually I try and get them before. But yeah, there's some good banana in there for them. Some potato peels some pasta shells, which I don't mind putting in here right now because we are going to get a little bit of a cold snap. We'll be in the 50s at night, which I know for most of the people watching is uh, really warm, but for us in Florida, that's pretty cold. So we'll leave that there. I'll add a little bit of bedding. I'm going to add my coffee and tea grounds. And then we'll also add the grit. And then here is the bin that usually is inverted and is on top of my outdoor worm bin at all times. But this is the worms we're going to dump in. But this is all kind of the bedding material that came out of harvesting all the casting. So I'm just going to dump that right on top. So we've got all that bedding right on top there for them. And I think we are set up. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified if you ring the bell when I have more videos that come out, and I've got two other bins, Fermi Hut indoor worm bin and a tiny indoor worm bin. So let's go ahead and set this up and we're gonna add our worms. Here they are, so here we go.
All right, I think most of them wiggled in for the most part, so I'll just add some more bedding on top because I'm also going to add some water right here. So hope everybody is doing well, is having a great new year, and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.